Hey guys and gals and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do something a little different. Something that's honestly very near and dear to my heart. One of the really nice blessed surprises I've had from being on YouTube is I get people frequently reaching out asking for career and life advice. Which to be honest, I don't feel terribly qualified to make, but you know, a lot of people have been following me over the years and has seen, you know, things grow and they're they have questions about, you know, how I've I'd, I'd say amassed a level of comfort in my life. So while I don't claim to be an expert on any of these things, nor do I feel like this is going to be an exhaustive list, reflecting on this stuff, I do very much have things that I've seen that I really wish people would have told me and I think have really made the difference. And I've learned a lot of these lessons the hard way, as I'm sure most of you have or will, unfortunately. And so if I can help in any way, I do very much find meaning and pleasure in sharing some of the things that I've learned along the corporate pathway and just honestly in my whole working career. And I've been working since I was very young, like we're talking like 12-ish years old, started off making minimum wage. And, you know, there's just a lot of stuff out there. I know everybody for the most part works, you know, working can be difficult and there's a lot of politics and stuff we have to put up with. So anyway, I figured I'd kick this off with one of the questions that I get asked all the time, as I'm sure you've heard this question before too. What do I wish I knew then that I know now about getting ahead in corporate America? Or any job, honestly, for that matter. And thinking about it, I think it's a lot simpler than people make it out to be. I think there's a lot of this, you know, it's life isn't fair. There's a lot of victimhood stuff and just like being in the right place at the right time and, and being lucky. And don't get me wrong. I think being lucky is very much a part of a lot of our experiences. Um, call it law of attraction, call it luck, call it whatever you want. But I also believe that the majority of the reason that people get ahead and achieve any level of success in life, quite honestly, is based on things that are in their sphere of control. So thinking about this, here's a couple things that I would highly recommend as you start off your career, if you're early in your career or you're looking to start a different career or just be more successful in general, that I really think make the difference between being successful and not being successful. The first thing that was really difficult for me to learn personally, quite honestly, was it's better to be productive than to be right. What do I mean by that? When I first came out of college, as is uh, most people's affliction, there's a sense of you know everything and being right is what matters. And I was very quickly taught in corporate America specifically that there's a difference between being right and productive. Namely, having the right answer to something is less important than finding a productive way to achieve it and to build relationships with other people. Let me be even less obtuse about this. There were multiple situations earlier in my career where I saw things that I thought were wrong, saw things that I disagreed with. And I'm not talking about moralistic type stuff, but just I thought people were making bad decisions. And what did I do? I just shot my mouth off like I do here on YouTube. And I made comments about how I thought they should have done something better or how they had it all wrong. What I didn't realize by calling out people and calling out decisions um, as just being flat out wrong or just why would you do this kind of stuff? I was putting people on the defensive. When you call decisions out to people and you ask why things are the way they are, you criticize things, especially things that people take pride in, the first thing you do, it's human instinct, is to put that person on the defensive. So by walking up to bosses or coworkers and saying, why'd you do that? That makes no sense to me. I basically said to them subliminally, you're an idiot, I think I'm smarter than you, and what were you thinking? Their defensive kicks in and they're like, he's an idiot, he doesn't respect me, he doesn't listen to me, shut up. And they basically are, if they have to talk to me, gonna talk to me as little as possible and if they are my superior, are gonna find ways to get me to shut up in ways <laughs> more effective. I will never forget that I got sent to a Dale Carnegie How to Win Friends and Influence People course, which at the time I went to begrudgingly. That was honestly one of the biggest breakthroughs for me in my career. The course teaches stuff that all sounds really intuitive and blatantly obvious to people. You know, I, uh, you know, listen to people when they talk, be an active listener in general, don't criticize, seek to understand, find other people interesting, be a good listener. All stuff that when I read this, I'm like, yeah, duh, everybody does this. But then when I reflected, I realized I wasn't doing these things very well. I was usually pretty sarcastic with people. I would usually come in with pre canned answers when they were talking. I was listening to respond. All stuff that we hear about, but we need to be very diligent in practicing. When I went away from being the person that was criticizing the work to a person that was actively seeking to understand why people did what they did, I found several things. One is most people are genuinely quite interesting people. Most people make decisions with good intent on the information they had, and they made a lot of decisions either because they didn't know better, which is not necessarily their fault, 
or they made these decisions because there wasn't an alternative option available, some sort of a cultural issue or the reasons they couldn't accomplish it. And all I did by being the critic to them in the past was basically make no attempt to understand them, no attempt to appreciate them, and make myself someone they never wanted to work with. And by being someone who's a good listener, someone who seeks to understand and actually genuinely appreciates people, people will reciprocate and like being around you, which means they're going to want to work with you, which means they're going to want to help you and they're going to want to give you opportunities too. And if you want to influence them to make a different decision, if you approach them as a friend versus a critic, guess what? They're going to be far more likely to listen to you. And that really ties to a, a point too that I want to make, which is be a doer, don't be a critic. There are lots of people in this world, YouTube and social media loves to track these kind of folks that will all day point out where people went wrong and will criticize decisions that were made or things that have been created. Anybody can be a critic, especially an anonymous critic. The people that stand out, the people that achieve success in this life, don't just criticize, they do something about it. They're doers. If you see something that's wrong, if you see something that could be better, don't sit there and complain about it. Find a way you can make a difference. And in corporate America, a lot of the experiences that I've I've had that it got me ahead, and quite honestly, most of the promotions I've received in my corporate career were ones that were just given to me. I didn't ask for them. It's because I saw problems that nobody else wanted to step up to fix, and I offered to fix the problem. And after a while, people realized that I was adding value and wanted to take care of me and make sure that I also grew. When you are constantly finding ways to fix opportunities, what you realize is there's a lot of blatant, obvious problems that nobody wants to do anything about. A lot of people would rather sit there and complain or talk like they're going to do something, but they don't actually fix the problem. And if you're, the, if you're one of those rare individuals that'll fix the problem, guess what? People are going to learn to appreciate you very, very quickly. And that really ties to my, my real overall takeaway, and these are all kind of on the same theme, which is... Attitude and character make the difference in your success. That is my genuine belief. I know people get wrapped up around your credentials. Credentials, once you're hired into a job, people tend to forget what your credentials were. I can't remember the last time somebody asked me what school I went to, what my GPA was, or what my, my studies were about. It doesn't come up anymore. It did when I started my career. People remember how they feel when they're around me. They'll remember if I'm a guy that they want to be around. They'll remember if I was nice to them. They'll remember if I yelled at them in a meeting. And they're going to remember whether or not I think I'm entitled. So as a leader and now a leader of leaders who's, who's managed multiple individuals, hired, fired, all that, I can tell you as a leader, the employees that you don't really want to do anything for are the ones that show up like they think they're great. They All they do is criticize and they think they're entitled to get constantly promoted. Those are not the people that get promoted. Those are the people that get sidelined or potentially exited from the company. The people that stand out and the people that get ahead are the ones who practice humility the ones that people enjoy being around, and the ones that are willing to take an issue to do things nobody else is going to do. And when people come up in this way, everybody will go out of their way to help them get ahead. Unless they're in a toxic culture, in which case they need to go find a better culture. But I assure you, cultures that respect good character exist, and I've been fortunate to work in many of them. So thank you for sitting through this if you're still with me after this long ramble. I legitimately watched my career take off by mastering some of these things. I'm extremely grateful that I've learned them. Some of them, I learned them quite painfully. And so I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this. If it was helpful, great. If it wasn't, let me know what I can do better. I'm definitely open to feedback. And that's actually something else to add to this list. Always be open to feedback. Because when people tell you something that you did is wrong, it means one of two things. It means, they could be wrong, which is possible, but you're coming off in a way that is displaying that to them, which is a gap you can try to bridge if it's helpful to you. Or maybe you genuinely are wrong and that feedback will make you more successful. So please give me feedback as well. Always open to and appreciate of it. If this video is helpful, let me know and I'll make some more of them. This is stuff that I find meaningful and hopefully you do too. Thank you so much for tuning in. Catch you guys and gals on the next video. See you later.